Hello everyone and welcome back to Cities by Steven. You're talking to Steven. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please hit that subscribe button. Get that bell notification on too so you don't miss out on a video. Welcome back to the Skyline 6 and Morato where we are bringing you a vanilla multiplayer collaboration series. This is the start of round four. Yes, round four. Holy cow. Can't believe we're at round four already. And happy new year. Hope you all enjoyed uh, the holiday season. We're going to be starting off today's video with a farmland build and an interchange build and regional road build and two small town builds. Uh, normally on my channel, I would probably do one, of the, one at a time, um, but in today's video, we're gonna be packing this all together into one, and I really hope you enjoy. Um, why are we doing this? Well, with it being round four, I really want to start rounding out the edge edges of the city, and what better way to do that than with farmland? Farmlands are often found on the edges of your cities, so why not do that? Now, we're also gonna be building non-DLC farms. So, you know, the Industries DLC farmland with all that comes with the Industries DLC. Well, we're not going to be really doing that. We're going to be using the map characteristics to kind of create little homesteads. And uh, it's going to involve some, lots of detailing with the detailing time-lapse at the end. But uh, we're actually going to start today's episode with roads and interchanges because we've got to build the infrastructure to get to the farmland. So let's hop out and look at what I'm talking about. So here we are looking at the map here. We're pretty far away from a lot of what else has been built in this series so far, but we have these awesome well-defined plots of land from the map builder Karina uh, that made the map Morato that we're playing on. And uh, I think this is a perfect opportunity to kind of utilize some things that I usually do on my channel, um, which is kind of defining the edges of your city and uh, using farmland to do that. So uh, we're gonna create some little homesteads. And what do I mean by that? Well, um, you know when you're driving along country roads and you just pass by a farm and you kind of wonder who lives there? Well, we're gonna be building the homes for the people who live there. And we're gonna be placing it like a house, maybe a barn, maybe one small building inside of the, the farms. Maybe this one's an orchard, for example. We're gonna be, be creating kind of little teeny farms and homesteads in all these plots of land. But on top of that, we need to build the infrastructure to get there, like I said. So we're going to be building a regional road network that runs from here and this interchange over here, which is a diamond interchange. Uh, and we're going to connect it whoop, right up to here where I've planned out the building of another diamond interchange, but the inverse of the former. So we're going to be then bringing this one all the way around and connecting it up to this area right over here right by CityZilla's build. So we're gonna be connecting it up to this road here, which is another diamond interchange. So lots of diamond interchanges <laughs> to start off with, but we're gonna be starting off with this because everything we're, gonna, we're going to do is gonna play off of this connection here. Kind of gives us tons of space to play with. Um, and then we're going to move into building the small town. So I have uh, the small town of Two Hill planned over here. And why Two Hill? Well. We're in the town, which is, let's just say is right here. There is one hill and two hill. So I thought that was kind of fun. And then we'll also be building the small town, the smaller town of the two, Brooks Corners. And know why Brooks Corners? Well, there's Brooks Petrochemicals over here. So perhaps it's named after the same family. So that's what we're gonna be starting with today. Um, let's start down in this corner here with Brooks Corner. And we're going to be following kind of the predefined terrain land, uh, lines uh, of the farms. And we're gonna, going to kind of swing out from here through the wash between this hill and this hill. And we'll kind of emerge between the two hills of two hill. Oh, sorry, no, one of the two hills of two hill. And we'll swing up and around and connect up to what is gonna be this interchange, which I've kind of pre-worked on a little bit. Uh, and then we'll come right back over to here. Whoa. A bit of an autosave and we'll do the same thing to connect up to this interchange then we'll build this interchange
Okay, so we've arrived at the interchange now. So let's talk about what I did over here. So here we go. We are at the interchange over here. Now I, I made this six lanes, which is a, you know, overkill for this type of interchange. Um, but you know, without mods, we can't have dedicated turning lanes. So by adding in an extra lane, we have a dedicated turning lane to what is going to be towards the major interchange of the build. So any, anyone coming from Two Hill or the farming towns of this area, if they were wanting to go um, towards the major interchange of the whole build, then uh, you know they have a dedicated lane here, and then they have two dedicated lanes to go forward where they can get onto this one or continue on towards the city. So uh, we're gonna then have a road over here. As you can see by the trees here, there's a good opportunity to get a road right through here. So that's also a good opportunity to kind of get the transition down from, uh, or yeah, from three lanes to two lanes on either side. Then we'll follow the tree line over here where we're gonna have the main town of Two Hill kind of on the edge of this main highway. Now, when I'm thinking of these small towns, there's often kind of two uh, ideas with how we're going to create the small towns. One, the highway goes right beside the town and past the town, um, which is kind of in this style. Or, you know, you can always build a style where the highway is the main street of the town, which is challenging to do if traffic gets pretty gnarly. Uh, then, at this point here where we have a potential road, we transition sizes. So we go back, to, we're still at four lanes total on this interchange, but we lose the median. And then over here, we have another opportunity. This is where the regional highway starts becoming zonable land, or you know, it starts slowing down when you're coming through here. Uh, you see like the warning sign that the speed limit's slowing down, and then you go down to the first set. And then perhaps when you get to this road, this is when it gets to you know normal city speeds or something like that. So then we come up to here, and we're at the interchange. Now this one over here, I wanted to follow the terrain line that we had along the hill here. And I really like the idea of having this road kind of built up on a cliff. There's definitely some smoothing that we can do uh, and whatnot, but also leaving this area available is something that I'm really keen on. This uh, large lot here, in case someone wants to just do something with that. Otherwise, you know, it can always be just a massive park. Uh, and then we come through here where we get to Brooks Corners. Um, and again, we have the main kind of intersection where we're going to have some roads be also the transition in road types. So let's go back to the interchange and we're going to going to build a quick little diamond interchange, uh, through here. And I think we might end up leaving this as a six lane road underneath because I like the idea of the dedicated turning lanes. Um, even if the lanes are, you know, a bit overkill in real life. All right, so there we have it. A uh, quick little interchange here. I think there's definitely needing to be some work that we'll do in the time lapse. Um, but uh, kind of the main features, we have uh, extended lanes on the edges here. And we could go even farther by getting kind of three lane kind of roads. But um, I think just having this one here be a right hand turn and this one being a straight. Uh, straight away would be beneficial because I'm sure cars in this lane would then uh, get into the left lane and then get onto the highway this way. But I like having these roads now. It's important to do the roads with no parking so that cars don't park here on the edge of the uh, off ramp because that does happen, especially in populated areas. But I think all in all, I think it's uh, pretty cool. I like this longer curve on this side. Uh, it doesn't match the rest of it, but I think it makes the most sense coming from this angle here. Uh, we have the dedicated off ramp and it's a little bit longer, but a lot more forgiving. Um, but then of course, as we get from two lanes back to three, we have the extra lane here for merging. 
So, uh, that is the interchange. And look at what we've got so far. So that's pretty great, eh? We got uh, some pretty good connections through here, which is going to be very, very helpful for when we start building up the towns. Uh, now, I did say we're going to start with Brooks Corner. So let's talk about Brooks Corner here. It's a small town. I think this is going to be the smaller of the two. Uh, but we have some cool opportunity to actually use some Industries DLC, should we wish, right in this slot. This is farmland or farmable land. Fertile land, that is the word. Um, but we also have these smaller blocks right through here. Um, so let's start off by kind of identifying some unique spaces in Brooks Corners. Now, what policies are we using on Brooks Corners? Well, we have recycling. We have parks and recreation because that boosts land value around parks. We also have tax relief for low density residential and schools out so that people in the town just go right to work in the mines, apparently. Uh, but that's definitely beneficial uh, for the game. Okay, very good. And then we're going to use an industrial road for this one. Now, why an industrial road? Well, because I think industrial roads mimic roads that have kind of gone in a bit of disrepair, perhaps. And I think that's a good theme for this area here. So we'll bring this one to about right there. And then we are going to transition it to a dirt road. Okay, very cool. So that worked out very well. And then we're going to have just a normal basic road. Nothing fancy at all. Just something real simple. And we're going to connect it up from here over to where we have our current junction. So this is going to be the extent of Brooks Corners. So uh, I think maybe we can get one more kind of road connection through here and we can have a nice simple connection like that. And then even just a simple road from here over like so. That means we can downgrade this one to that. So very simple little town. I think maybe we can get another road through here, but I th this is going to dead end on the railway. Um, and then maybe we can think about potentially expanding that out to here and the wider world. All right, so uh, what I've done over here is I've created a, an interesting junction where uh, we come out into here and then we have it kind of Y off, but this is clearly the same road and they've added on this road here, probably for access to the railway and over into this side of, the, sorry, this terrain here should we wish in the future, though it doesn't need to be anything at all. Um, but we then come over this way, kind of following the same lines of the farmland. And then we've arrived to here where I think we need to get a bridge over the highway, connecting down, swinging and connecting into there. All right, so yeah, that took me a little bit longer to do that. So I, I cut a little bit of that out, uh, but um, we got a truss bridge through here and I definitely think we're gonna detail it up a bit more during our little detailing time-lapse at the end, um, because you know, there's some trees there and stuff that we can remove. Uh, but uh, yeah, the, you know, there's no clipping underneath the bridge, which was a big problem. Uh, but I'm really pleased with it. I think it works out great, especially for a bridge of this length. Uh, it's really important to me that we get um, it not just be an elevated road, but a bridge piece because, you know, it, it's definitely more supported. So I've already connected it up into here. Now we need to connect it up into here where we previously said we were going to have a connection. So again, we're using the industrial road here and we'll continue using it for this theme. Now, also, this is important because I don't want cars to use this as a bypass for the highway. If we were to use, say, this as a highway piece, uh, it could encourage cars to use the high speed limit of it and bypass the use of the highway. So just got to get a better angle here. And we're definitely going to be using the asymmetrical road coming onto it, at least. Perhaps we might change this up. Uh, we shall see. But I want to make sure that we have a bit of a straightaway right here. And then we will use the industry road to connect up to it on a very simple and nice curve. So I know we're building over top of trees, which is n kind of like a, no, it's not a good thing to do. Um, but uh, I like in this situation using the trees as a bit of a marker for myself. So uh, we are going to be using that uh, or, or we're going to be doing that uh, a little bit. 
Uh, all right, so now that we're here, we have power that we need to bring over into the future town of Two Hill. So we're going to be kind of creating a bit of an access road for that. And we're going to be following what's going to be the tree line uh, and what's going to be the power line. Power line line, I guess. <laughs> and uh, we're going to be bringing it, bringing it in right here. This also gives us access to uh, this plot of land uh, and this one. But we also need another road right here. This one's very simple and clear what's going to happen. Okay, so we've continued power a little bit farther. But now let's go back to Brooks Corners where we started this whole road project and I think all in all it's kind of taking it in right from here looks like we're doing a good job so far so Brooks Corners what are we gonna do here well um, this is probably the main corners or maybe it's this one I'm not sure what the corners is named after but you know it's probably one of these two roads here um, so uh, definitely need some commercial need some industry need some residential so let's start off by zoning kind of what's gonna be the main sh main street I guess and I'll be right in here. So we'll be seeing lots of traffic go by here um, with the uh, uh, the mines so close. So I'm sure a lot of these would be diners and whatnot in real life. Uh, we also have the opportunity to use this land for some potential um, development, but there definitely wouldn't be any connection on this road. So I feel comfortable zoning this up with commercial. So that is a lot of block zoning, but we have the demand and we're pretty close to a larger residential or yeah, a larger residential area. So I'm okay with it. Um, while I'm thinking of it though, we're going to add in a bus line and that bus line is just going to serve, um, just, you know, connecting people, uh, into this area where they can transfer to this larger yellow bus. Um, but we don't have power. That's not good, but we have the power option right here. So I was hoping that we just have something, um, you know, jump over, but we can always use something small uh, to create uh, that connection. So, you know, the common thing to do in this situation is to use a transformer or what uh, what is known in this game as an earthquake sensor. So we place this down right in this corner. It looks like an electrical transformer, but it will also jump the power, which is beneficial. We also need water. Now, yes, I forgot water. Of course I did. Forget water in every single video. All right. So yeah, we're getting some good shops in here. We got what is probably an older grocery store or something like that. Uh, whatever these are, uh, you know, a couple, uh, maybe that's a law office um, and stuff like that. But we got some diner over here. We also got a pennies, a laundry, a bookstore, a wine and liquor store. I bet that gets some use on Fridays after work. Um, okay, so now uh, I'm feeling comfortable zoning in some other stuff and uh, that's going to be residential. So we're going to be putting residential over in here, but uh, I definitely want to also get uh, some other themes going on. So we actually have farming industry through here and I'm hoping that we can get some unique little farming industry buildings through here. And I don't mind doing industry when it's farming industry that backs on to residential. So we'll see how much demand that actually gets. If it even grows, we'll see. But um, one thing I always enjoy placing down in these locations, which really boosts the land value, especially with one of the themes we have on, which is parks and recreation boosts, is going into the parks tab and going to dog park. And the dog parks are really small and they fit in really well in many locations. So uh, again, this isn't probably the safest of locations, but uh, I've definitely seen many a dog parks in some awkward spots. So why don't we place this one right in there and people could park along the street here. It's fenced in, so that's cool, but it kind of creates a bit of a transition zone from uh, the town into the, the mine. But uh, yeah, these kind of buildings you often see along the main streets of these older towns. So I said we needed a bit of a modern expansion in this town, didn't we? 
um, kind of over in here. So oftentimes in these small towns, you see the original town and then some developer comes along and builds a bit of a grid nearby because they know how uh, they know that there's some demand in the area. Uh, but this town has no services and that's okay because um, you know there are some services nearby if we look at our options we have some garbage coming out this way uh, we have some fire protection uh, we have some police no oh, no no police uh, protection that's okay uh, and we have some recreation over here with the dog park but we can get some more um, and healthcare where's healthcare we're not covered by healthcare, so that's something we can add in pretty easily. So we're gonna use this slot of land right here to kind of add in some services. And uh, we'll start off with the healthcare, and we're going to basically just plop this one in right here. Very good, right off of the main highway. You often see uh, the clinics of these small towns right on the edges of the town. Uh, now, police, um, hmm. That's a bit of a tougher one. I could definitely see us getting a police station somewhere, but uh, we're pretty close to the highway, so maybe we could get a bit of a highway patrol. That could be cool. Uh, though it doesn't really work with how we have our power lines set up. So I was thinking maybe we put it right in here, but there's so many power lines. Let me just reorganize the power lines. All right, so we're going to be putting our highway patrol over here. Now, why am I saying highway patrol? Well, there is one asset that I love to use as highway patrol, uh, which is a great police station. It is a larger police station, but that's okay. You often see uh, that happen in these small towns where they have a large highway patrol uh, building nearby. And that's right here. I'm actually gonna flip it. All right, we've cleared some space for this helicopter, but we have a helicopter right here. It's close to the highway. The helicopter can take off and patrol the highway. We're also close to the highway where we can duck off and go in uh, via the, the interchange. Uh, so we have some opportunity here for some more of this industry. And I think that is a fantastic idea. So there we have it. That's this first small town, Brooks Corners. Pretty cool. Now let's get some homesteads in because we'll talk about this now. We'll go to the other town and then we'll talk about the homesteads a bit more. So um, I really like this idea because I think it takes up a lot of space, but there's one thing that's a little difficult to do in vanilla and that is, you know, actually encouraging the buildings to get built because we're going to be building in zones that are not desirable to build in. So Brooks Corners has one park in it and it's not exactly the most desirable of place to live. But, you know, it's blue, pretty close to some green land as well, which is nice. Uh, but, you know, there is some light blue, so we might see some house get built over here. But the thing about these dirt roads is they make for great driveways. So um, let's kind of define this land here. We'll make it a park area. And this will be one person's land. And I'll come back and I'll name a bunch of these farms um, in the time lapse. All right, so this person's house is going to be right in here. We're going to wait for that. Sorry, we're not going to wait for it to get built up because it'll take forever. Um, usually, with Find It, uh, which is a mod, you can just plop it down, and usually the house will stick. If not, you can always add in some parks around to kind of encourage. Uh, that build uh, you know the building of it and uh, that's something we might end up doing um, now we also have a, a huge area over here this is a pretty large area this this could be a park this could be anything this could be a town even um, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start it off as like a ranch and then what we'll do is uh, we'll you know we'll see what gets built up here and of course with all of these farmland builds, um, they are totally okay to be deleted should you know a, a builder want to uh, use this land. So this road will go off into the distance 
Um, I'm just going to kind of mimic that. So this is a ranch, let's say. So why don't we demarcate that as a ranch right in here. Primrose Park, Primrose Ranch. Uh, we'll rename them all. Have a list of names uh, afterwards. So uh, what needs to go into a ranch? Well, it definitely needs to be fenced off. That's for sure. Uh, and barns. Barns are also really useful um, to have. So uh, that's what we're going to kind of do. And one way we're going to be able to get those barns in here, because that is an Industries DLC item, is we're going to need to bring in Industry Zoning. All right, so we have a nice little farm over here. And this will also, uh, you know, show that this area is a farm as well. Um, so any other buildings that we can place in, I don't want to even use the crop production because I don't want those uh, buildings kind of in use. But, um, you know, I think a barn is always good to have. So we'll have this barn over here. Yeah, that's okay. We'll place this barn right here. And we're going to turn it off. Or at least on empty, because I wouldn't mind if the trucks were still roaming around. Okay, very good. And then fencing all around it, which we'll do in a time lapse. Um, okay, so now that we have that, what we can do is we can grab our industry deal, our industry zone, bring it over here into Primrose Park. And now inside of that zone, uh, we can then add in an industry DLC building like a barn like a barn for the cattle and then also we can add in uh, you know a maintenance shed as well uh, which would help with the tractors and stuff like that so this one we're gonna set on empty so we have the truck still roaming around but hopefully nothing else really appears there and then to encourage the zoning and the, sorry the building in this zone what we can do is just add in a little teeny park and it can be anything we're gonna use dog parks there we go. And the dog park's going to be right there and hopefully encourages zoning our building of zones. And yes, it does. We're also going to need to bring power over here. Um, and we can do that pretty simply. Let's do a couple more and then we'll move on to the other. Um, yeah, we'll move on to the uh, other town. All right, so we got some houses in here. We'll wait for them to come in. Um, you know, it's definitely easier to do if you play without power lines uh, because, uh, you know, power lines do kind of ruin the look, but I was hoping that we could hide them a little bit with trees. Uh, so we'll see how that works in the end. Uh, but we do need to bring power up to here now. So let's do that. All right, so there we have it. We got Brooks Corners and um, looks like we have some issues with not enough services. So we'll try to remove some of these more higher up buildings. We'll try to get some lower value buildings. Um, all right, so I set up Brook Farm with a little bit of, uh, you know, added buildings. So right on this corner, we have uh, workers barracks and a farm, uh, sorry, and a farm maintenance building. Uh, and then we have a cattle shed over here, which just adds a bit of um, flare to the, the build. Um, so again, we'll uh, we'll come back and we'll detail this all up. But uh, I think all in all, this town is going to uh, be pretty good. Uh, what's this building? That is also pretty large. Um, so <laughs> let's delete that one. Uh, these are the kind of buildings that I'm hoping for. Um, all right, so we'll follow our new highway. And you know what? Why don't we name this road? All right, Two Hill Highway, there we go. And now we are at the town of Two Hill. So um, like I said, there are a couple ways you can do farm towns. You can do that where the roads go through the town itself, kind of like this one. It's not exactly to that extent, but you know, it is a main road, right? Um, but this town is going to be a bit of a different story. So we have 
the town that has been built up previously. And then we have the modern highway kind of running beside it uh, with some modern commercial and stuff like that um, along the sides. And then we'll have a bit of an older theme through here. So we'll have this road be a bit of a, a main road or this you know tree line be a bit of a main road here. Um, and maybe we'll say that they cut off the access at some point or something like that. And that'll be kind of the story of where this road came from. Um, we could also bridge it as well in the future should someone wish to do that. Uh, so we'll use just, um, you know what, how about I just, uh, I draw in some of the roads and then we'll come back to this. All right, so we've got some of the roads uh, through here now. So we've kind of demarcated, uh, you know, plots of land, farm, uh, homesteads, um, you know, some forested zones through here, uh, telling a story of the town as well, which is a lot of fun. Uh, telling the story through the town via landscapes, which is pretty cool. Uh, so now we're in the plot of area, which is going to be the town itself. So we've kind of established a bit of a grid here with these two here. They are at the same uh, length. All right, yeah, same same grid pattern. So I think we're gonna run the town off of that grid pattern. It also makes sense to do. Uh, this follows a terrain line, so that would be the modern highway doing that, uh, you know, cost saving measure. But this being a farm town, it was probably surveyed out at the same time, and it was easiest at the back in the day to survey uh, roads um, into grids, even if there was terrain challenges, which I'm not sure how the terrain really is. Oh, it's flat. So they would have 100% Follow this grid here. Okay, very good. So we'll maintain this grid all the way through. We're just going to use the basic uh, roads here for now. And. Uh, yeah, okay, so back to what we were saying before. This is a great opportunity to get a connection in right on this curve. So we'll try to make this one uh, part of the grid pattern. So that'd be right there. I think maybe we can save some space here and then go to a perfect grid of eight by eight and then come at that at a nice angle. This also gives us opportunities to downgrade this road should we wish. Uh, this one here is going to become a bit gnarly, this intersection, so we'll need to change that momentarily. Okay, so we've established 8x8 on this main grid line. We'll say this is the old main road of the town. Perhaps this is where there used to be an old highway connection up into here. Maybe we can kind of draw that in as this being the old highway. That will tell a story, wouldn't it? Or the old, it doesn't have to be a highway, you know, the old kind of connection through this town. And we'll kind of have this dead end before the highway, right about there. And then we can get a nice dirt path connection because we don't want people using this. But, you know, if people were to walk this way, I'm okay with that. Perhaps this indicates a bit of a desire path as well. Uh, okay, and that helps tell a story uh, a lot, actually. And then we can also redraw in this connection to make it seem like it's a continuation of this road. There we go. So it looks like they redefined this road as the priority. Um, okay. So we have an eight by uh, whatever this is grid, which is perfect, but I actually want to shrink that down going forward. All right, so there we have the main grid of the town. So now let's kind of build up what is this main road. So we have Main Street right through here. 
Uh, we'll call this road. All right, so we have them all numbered and we got town line through here, which will demarcate the edge of the town's um, you know, property. So we have some nice, cool street opportunities through here. I definitely think we should get connections onto this main road as much as possible. Um, definitely, definitely something that I've seen uh, in these small towns when we're driving through them, where the town is on one side of the highway and the, uh, primarily what's just along the highway is just some commercial, like McDonald's, uh, gas stations, stuff like that. Um, uh, definitely, you know, lots of lights. So I think we're going to play with that theme. All right, so right along Main Street, we're definitely going to get some commercial. Um, now, the tricky thing is, though, um, um, is that we're going to be having the backs of the commercial buildings to the uh, highway, but that's okay. So uh, when I'm thinking about this small town, what do these small towns need? Well, you know, you got to start at the top. So do we have water? Do we have power? Do we have garbage? Well, I think garbage we're going to, going to um, uh, place uh, at a bit of a more strategic location. Uh, down the line, so we'll deal with that at the end, actually. But post office, post office is a fantastic building to place in these towns. We'll have it on Old Main and uh, so we got sixth, fourth. We'll have it at Old Main and eighth, right in a corner like that. That is perfect. Now, uh, definitely something that needs to be in these towns. Uh, healthcare. So um, I'm going to do something you know that's probably not the best for game mechanics, but I think it's something that makes the towns look pretty neat. So we're going to have our clinic and this clinic is going to be you know, somewhat off the main street. So we can place it here. I think uh, I think this is probably the best spot for it. So it's a bit more in what's going to be the residential side of things. But I'm also going to place in a second medical clinic. But why, uh, why am I doing this? Well, I think these buildings look like older buildings that you find um, in some of these towns. But also they look like uh, if, if you have a med, clinic, med clinic already, you can add another one and you can say that one of them is a veterinarian. So that's what we're going to do with this one. It's a vet clinic and that is fantastic because, you know, having those extra buildings really does make a difference. Um, so moving down the line here, we have childcare. That's very good to have in these small towns because, uh, you know, it's you live so far away from the big cities, right? But my favorite building to place in these old town builds is the sauna. Now, why the sauna? Well, if we're looking at the building, it looks so much like a building you would see in and around a main street. Now, it actually should probably be something like that. You know, a really old style house. Looks fantastic on old main streets. Um, and then that's it for here. So uh, fire for sure, we could definitely place in a fire building. But I'm going to be placing in the old historical fire station. Uh, why? Because I think the building can be utilized in many different ways. So uh, something really popular in Canada are to, is to utilize older buildings, keep them historical, but they become uh, what is a Legion Hall? Well, it's uh, a place that is uh, kind of like a community center for people of, you know, uh, the public service, fire, police, uh, military. Um, and you all, if, you, if you're a former mem member of one of those communities, uh, you get in for free and it's kind of like a community center. There's a bar, there's dances. It's a lot of fun, very common, and they often look something like that. But uh, we might end up throwing in a radio mast as well. So we have a couple of great options for this. Um, now, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to put it beside uh, power lines, but I think it could be cool we have it somewhere over here because it looks somewhat like a bit of an access road for something and why not utilize that for radio 
Uh, police. So again, with uh, the police station, we can use utilize this as a historical police station, and we can place this uh, building somewhat close to the other one, perhaps kitty corner to it. Very good. And this can be, you know, doesn't have to be a, uh, a fire station or a police station. It can be, it can be Old Town Hall. Why not? You often see that uh, happen. Um, and then uh, moving down, we don't need anything else in police station, but we do need education. And um, one building in education that I really, really like is the public library. And because you often see these um, on the edges of the towns, of, of old towns. You know, it's a, a, a newer build uh, in the town, perhaps. And we can say that that is right over in here. All right, so this doesn't have to be a library either. It can be, it can be the town hall, which is a, you know always fun to do. Um, okay, what else do we need in here? Well, we actually need real education buildings, and we'll go with a modern elementary school. Um, does this area need a high school? Well, no, we have schools out, so I don't think. Uh, a high school isn't exactly necessary. High schools also take up a ton of space, and I'm sure that uh, kids from Two Hill would get kind of bust in to um, District Heights for a high school. So why don't we run that bus uh, later on in the episode? Um, any other education buildings that we could place down? Uh, well, of course there are, but uh, I think we're probably good with what we have. Uh, transportation buildings. Well, I think we could probably pass on on this stuff for for now. We'll come back to it. Uh, parks, though, we definitely need parks. Um, let's see if we can get in one of the basic parks right through here. That's a bit too large, so why don't we go with uh, small playgrounds? That's a large playground. That's okay. I don't mind a large playground. We can do that. And why don't we get the large playground right in here? I mean, that can be kind of beginning of. A nice little uh, zone here for people to um, enjoy some recreation. Uh, also along these main towns you often see uh, like a little plaza or something that uh, has a commemorative statue or something like that and we can place that in here as well. All right so I think we're at the zoning time now so I don't know if there's any other buildings I want to place in here and you know I am being picky with uh, what we got going on. And, uh, and that's okay. Uh, all right, so let's get those commercial buildings in now. All right, so we have the commercial buildings coming in now, and now it's time for residential buildings. So I put fences in here because I like having fences to separate the zoning between commercial and residential, especially when they're on the same block. But otherwise, I think we can just block zone a lot of this. Uh, you know, now I don't always definitely recommend doing this, uh, but I think um, we are okay to do this uh, in this instance. So um, I'm just going to leave it for now as we do other things, and this is definitely going to be, be pretty much all residential. I think I might start separating them out a little bit uh, more as the time uh, goes along. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, this town is coming along pretty nicely. All right, so Two Hills really coming along pretty nicely. 
um, definitely pleased with this area. Now there's definitely stuff we can do with this area. We could, you know, build a park or something like that, but I've definitely run out of time for today's video. So um, I would definitely want to get a few more of these homesteads in. So um, I'll be doing that in a speed through to kind of end off the video. Uh, and we'll be just doing the same thing that we were doing before. Okay, so uh, for the most part, we have it all complete. Uh, now we just need to jump into the detailing time lapse. Uh, the town is filled out. We had it a little park. Uh, figured out a way to get uh, power to these houses without uh, having to draw the power lines, and that is using the earthquake sensors, the transformers. They uh, they work out great. Um, definitely like to look at this town. Definitely going to need to keep an eye on the height of this town. I'm not the biggest fan of what's going on with these buildings, but I drew some bus lines. We have one bus that just circulates the town. We have another bus that drops us off at the high school over here, and then also at the nearest metro stop, which is fantastic. Um, uh, I think we need a bus for this town, which, oh no, I think we already got that bus. Yeah, which drops us off into here. Uh, but uh, overall, folks, I think this is a pretty uh, great use of the space. There's still lots of space for other builders to use. Um, and these homesteads can totally be destroyed because, you know, that's what happens in real life, unfortunately. But also, uh, you know, they do take up a lot of space for really not much value to the city so um, I'm just gonna jump into a time lapse where we're gonna detail up these two towns and then we'll call it a day Right, so there we have it. Hope you enjoyed that detailing time lapse. And uh, you know, my round four build for Skyline Six uh, with Murato. And you know, I really enjoyed doing this. I really enjoy these small town builds. And you know what? I actually learned a lot while recording this uh, as well. Um, so let's just do a bit of a recap. We have Brooks Corners here, um, where we have a highway patrol with some farming industry. It is the you know small town. Uh, you know, just. Uh, a town that's developed on these corners of the Brooks farm just over here uh, but we also have all these ranches and farms named after some of the series is from the Skyline 6 members um, and uh, yeah you know it'll add just a, a bit of you know it'll add a, a good look here while we're um, panning over this area um, and then over here we have our interchange which is getting some use which is really good to see uh, some people are using it to cut through uh, this area to get to the downtown core, avoiding this major interchange. And I doubt anyone's going to really use this area, but it's a good access point um, should we need to expand on, on it in the future. 
We also added in a bridge connection over here as well, which is nice, which uh, is actually getting some use too, which is uh, good to see. Um, and then coming over here to Two Hill, uh, we have a bunch more of these farms over here. And it looks like we need some power over on this way, over this way, which I'll fix momentarily. But um, yeah, look at this. The town sure did develop quickly and it looks pretty nice to me. Um, let me know what you think down in the comment section down below. Joy is up next week. I'll talk to you soon. Peace out.